hello friends uh, in this series of videos we will be solving uh, the problems related to transactions and schedules which are a part of important part of database management systems uh, so i will be solving some random and uh, tricky problems related to transactions and schedule management uh, and we'll start with the first problem so this is the schedule which is given to us uh, now we we need to find the order in which uh, the transactions need to be executed if the, first of all we need to find if the whether, whether the serial uh, schedule is serializable or not another thing we need to find is the order of execution right so for, first we need to find whether it is serializable or not and second we need to find the order of execution right so anyways since we are solving the problems directly i'll just give you a, a brief uh, introduction about the conflicts and all that so any read will have a conflict with write and any write will have a conflict with read and any other write also now all of this should be on the same resource so that is a very important thing uh, what i mean by same resource is read on x will have a conflict with write on x only uh, if there is a write on y and then there will be a no conflict right but if there is a conflict there will be it the resource needs to be the same right so now we will take one example schedule which is given to us so we are given this schedule we need to find the order of execution and whether check whether it is serializable or not so we will we'll start so we are also given the timestamps of execution so we'll start that the, we, we know that transaction 3 comes in the place first of all so since we have three transactions we will uh, uh, represent them as t3 t2 and t1 so as to find out the precedence graph i mean the order in which the, they need to be executed so that they are serializable so first we'll start with read on y so anyways while we, while checking for the conflicts we ignore the self transaction because anyways it will not conflict with it own self right so we'll for transaction d3 we will check for all other transactions that is transaction 2 and 1 so since uh, re, re, we have the operation of read on y now what i am expecting is write on y right because read on y will have a conflict with write on y so we'll search for write on y if there is anywhere so yeah we can find it over here also and we can find it over here also right so these read on y will have conflict with both uh, write on y and write on y present in transaction 1 and 2 so that means that anyways my t3 needs to be executed first uh, before t3 uh, before t2 and t1 so now how i represented this edge so what this edge represents is which it represents the order of execution actually so which transaction should be uh, started before and which transaction should be started later so this indicates that so since this read on y has a conflict with this right uh, so these are the edges which i will add in my precedence graph now we'll move forward so we'll check about uh, read on z again we'll ignore all of this transaction uh, read on z will have conflict with write on z yeah so we cannot find any write operations so see these read and this read will not have a conflict because reads never have a conflict so that is self understood i'll not deep dive into the topics uh, now but i'll quickly solve the problem now then we move at time t3 transaction one does a read on x so again this read on x will have a conflict with write on x present anywhere else in any other transactions right so we can find that we have a write on x in transaction t2 there is nothing in transaction t3 so we will have to add a dependency from t1 to t2 which indicates that t1 needs to be executed first and t2 needs to be executed later so this is also done now we will have we will find write on x so write on x will have conflict with read on x and again if there is any write on x also so it will have a conflict with both of these two which are of part t2 so again yeah so since the, we have already included an edge between t1 and t2 we do not need to again add an edge any, add any other edge right now we come to write on y so write on y again will have a conflict with read on y and write on y both of these will have a conflict right so we'll have to make a edge from t3 to t1 and similarly here also there is a read and write on y so this write on y will have a conflict with t1 and t2 again so there is a, there are already edges from t3 to t2 and t3 to t1 which already signifies the same and then we move to write on z so this write on z is clearly conflicting with read on z and uh, yeah so that is the only conflict with this so we already have again h from t3 to t2 now we as we move forward we will check about this read on z i can see that this transaction has already completed probably i, I mean there are no operations as of now uh, this read on z and again there are no transactions on read on z as a resource so there will there is no conflict at all now again we move on to this transaction at t8 uh, this is read on y so read on y will have a conflict with this write of y right so we'll have to add edge from t1 to t2 which we already added 
Uh, this write on y again will have a conflict with read on y and write on y present over here. So we will, we'll, we have already added an edge between t1 and t2. So this already signifies the same. Now these four transactions can run independently because there are no transaction, there are no conflicting transactions present in t1 and t3 beyond uh, time of 14 seconds, right? So this is the, this is the final precedence graph which we have got, right? Now we can see that since there is no cycle, since there is no cycle in the graph, we can clearly say that it is conflict serializable schedule, right? So first thing is that we need, we have to identify that whether it is a conflict serializable schedule. The second thing is the precedence graph. So this is the precedence graph. Now, uh, some in competitive exams or some in, in some other exam, university exams, it is also been asked that we have to find the order of execution, right? So order of execution is very simple. How will you start? So this is a shortcut trick. Um, so let's say this is our precedence graph, right? You will first find a transaction which has no incoming edge, right? So which is that which is that transaction? We can see that clearly see that T3 is a transaction with no incoming edge. So we need to start the trans we need to start the schedule with T3. Why? Because there is no dependency on T3. So that's the re base reason behind choosing T3 as an uh, option. Another thing is we need to find, so now T3 is executed. So we will remove this size. We will remove this size. Now we'll check that what is the next in order. So we'll, I'll again make a same search over this graph. I'll see that T1 has no incoming edge because T3 has already completed it right now. There is no dependency on it. So I can see that next in order to be run is T1 and finally we can run T2. So this is the order of execution of the given schedule, right? So in case if you have any doubts in this problem, uh, in case if you do not know about the conflicts, first read about that because in this series of, in this playlist, I will only solve the problems and I hope that you have base understanding of the concepts. So this is the corresponding solution. In case if you have any doubts, comment it down. I will try to solve it. Uh, I will try to solve it for you. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.